Hey guys, welcome to a very special live episode of Buckeye Weekly. I'm Tom Orr, joined by Kevin Noon. Tony Gerderman's going to be hopping on in just a couple minutes. Real life has intervened for a moment, so we will get the official start. Don't worry, you'll get your power pause in a few minutes. But uh, as of right now, just want to let you know, first of all, if you're interested in uh, supporting us, you can find us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where we all write and uh, post on the message board and post our podcasts and all that good stuff. Uh, really fat, fantastic community. Uh, a, f a crystal ball came in on a uh, five-star cornerback for Ohio State today. So if you want to read about that, I'm going to guess Mark Givler. We'll have something on that a little later on today at BuckeyeHuddle.com, especially on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby. That is for all of our insiders. You can get you can get access there all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Uh, also, Tony's wife wants us to remind you to hit the thumbs up button on this and uh, make sure you like the show. Uh, that will help other folks find this show through whatever YouTube does. So, okay, so while we're waiting for Tony, I just want to, I mean, I'm assuming people have all seen this and you you know why we're here this morning. But here we go. Uh, report from Pete Thamel that came out in the wee hours of the morning. Uh, it, uh, a vast majority of the Big Ten coaches expressed their frustrations with the ongoing sign-stealing investigation at Michigan in a video call with Commissioner Tony Petiti on Wednesday, Sources told ESPN the call, which took 90 minutes, included nearly an hour without Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, who hung up after the regularly scheduled Big Ten business to allow the conference's coaches to speak freely about the NCAA's investigation into Michigan. According to five sources familiar with the call, a chorus of voices encouraged Petiti to take action against Michigan in a call that was described as both intense and emotional. Quote, collectively, the coaches want the Big Ten to act right now, said a source familiar with the call. What are we waiting on? We know what happened. Now, Kevin, I think there are several questions that sort of arise from that. Um, number one is, what can the conference do? Because we know that the NCAA cannot act on this within the span of this season. So if anything is going to happen this season, it would have to come from the Big Ten because the NCAA's bylaws require it to issue a notice of allegations and then the school gets 90 days to respond. So by the time you get through that 90 days, you know, even if and when that notice of allegations is issued and, and that has not happened yet, Michigan would then have 90 days to respond. So that would get you way past this year's college football playoff. So if something is going to happen this year, it would have to come from the Big Ten office. And I guess, you know, the, the, I, I, we can get through. I, I have a bunch of things pulled. So I went through a bunch of PDFs this morning to find what exactly are the Big Ten's rules on all of this. So I guess let's start with that. Do you have those ready? I do have them ready. Call, All right. call, call by the bylaw number. That's the easiest way for me to get them. All right, man. Well, All welcome that. to the most exciting podcast you're going to watch gonna all say, day. I'll, I'll try and crack some jokes to, to, to keep this from being too dry. All right. How about 10.2, authority of the commissioner? That seems like a good place to start. So the Big Ten commissioner, Tony Petiti, has exclusive authority to determine whether offensive actions have occurred. The commissioner shall have the exclusive authority to determine whether an offensive action as contempl uh, contemplated in Agreement 10.01 above has been committed by anyone referenced in Agreement 10.1 above. Basically, have you done anything to cheat or uh, lie or steal? Um, in making this determination, the commissioner may consider any evidence he or she deems relevant. The commissioner may accept any information provided by any source, but accept as outlined in 10.3.1 uh, below, we'll get there, has no formal obligation to do so. Authority to take disciplinary action in the event the commissioner determines that an offensive action has occurred. The commissioner shall have the authority to pose any disciplinary action in response to the offensive action subject to the provisions of agreement 10.3.3.1 below. All right. Next up, factors that may be considered. I promise this is going to get more interesting. I was going just... to say we should probably take them in little bite-sized pieces <laughs> and kind of do that just just so it, people... I had to take a couple of law classes in J school, and let me tell you, mm -hmm. I liked I liked that class so much I had to take it twice because oh. it was it was a little dry. <laughs> See, I liked I liked journalism law class. I got a good I think I got an A in journalism law. I like I, I like that one a lot. The, I got a B the second time. I got an F the first time because I stopped going because I hated it. <laughs> well, it was uh, it is an important class. You do have to you do have to pass it in order to get your degree. There is a reason for it, but I mean, I get you know, I the big takeaway there is, you know, first first thing can. Tony Petiti do anything about this? And the answer spelled out pretty clearly there is, yes. if he wants to, yes. Well, remember who the commissioner works for. The commissioner is there 
at, at, at the pleasure of the university presidents and chance, chancellors, the athletic departments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if they don't like the direction that things are going, they'll just put somebody else in that position. And of course, you know, that, that gums up everything of people trying to wait out the clock and everything else. But uh, what, you know, what, it's being said by coaches and then followed up, you know, allegedly there's an AD call that's supposed to be today. I don't, you know, I don't know that one for a fact that, you know, Twitter has all sorts of things on it, but uh, you know, this, there's, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Petiti if 13 of the member institutions are clamoring for something to happen, something kind of needs to happen. I mean, let's, let's not forget that uh, Kevin Warren right off the bat in his tenure Got a big old COVID sandwich and had to deal with stuff. And that wasn't probably dealt with the way that a lot of the rank and file would have liked to have seen. Uh, you know, I'm not going to relitigate all of that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is I, – I woke up to a text message from Tom saying, let's go live at 10. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? I mean, I didn't think that Pete Thamel was going to be burning the midnight oil with something dropping around midnight. Yeah, he, he was quite literally uh, burning the midnight oil. And you know, there was a tweet this morning from Adam Rittenberg, who is uh, from ESPN. He is pretty plugged in with the Big Ten. He's kind of their Big Ten ESPN reporter, and he's now the senior writer for college football for ESPN, but he's been covering the Big Ten for years and years. He says, news from Pete last night, pressure is rising on first-year commissioner Tony Petiti. As one source told me this morning, quote, he is going to have to act or he will lose the coaches and ADs. And, you know, we're going to get into what kind of actions he could potentially take in a little bit. But, you know, some of it could come down to, okay, Pete Thamel said uh, at one point, quote, vast majority of the Big Ten coaches uh, were upset about this. And it could come down to how vast the vastness is because you will have to, once you get past a certain level of punishments, Tony Petiti has carte blanche to do whatever he wants to up to a certain point. And then once you get past that certain point, then you get into, okay, the Big Ten has to have uh, other, you know, the other members, essentially the Big Ten Executive Committee has to uh, jump in and approve something beyond just the sort of standard level punishments. Speaking of standard level punishments, we're joined now by Tony Gerderman of BuckeyeHuddle.com. Tony, how's it going? No, Tom, no. Um, Kevin, please introduce me. It and now pause. joining us, the one, the famous, Tony Gerdeman. Thank you, Kevin. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, I apologize for being. <laughs> I you apologize doing? for being late. I'm good. Um, one of the downsides to working from home is that you your schedule exists uh, on everybody else's time frame. So, I'm here now. So I'm ready to go. Uh, are we talking about the? So are we still talking about this giant Michigan cheating scandal? And, and I think it's important to move beyond the calling it sign stealing and just going to cheating at this point based on everything that is being reported. Because the thing is, when we call it sign stealing, the immediate response from Michigan fans is sign stealing is legal. So if you just move to cheating, cheating is not legal. And then that kind of eliminates some of the silly responses. I want to know who's part of the uh, – if it's, it should be a unanimous thing, a vast majority. Who – who on that call is like, nope, nope, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I'm fine. If Connor Stallions wants to come on and hang out on our sideline with his uh, recording Ray-Bans and everything else, come on down. I'm, I'm good with it. I mean, who, who honestly? I mean, I almost feel like we're in that 1973 tiebreaker documentary where it's going to come down to an AD vote or something like that. And you have to sit there and count how many, how many votes you have in your pocket. I don't know who's standing with Jim Harbaugh on this one. Except for Sam Webb and the dude from MGO blog and Satan. Kevin, always great at keeping us right on the rails, right on task. All right, let's tell me, right, Kevin, I, Kevin. I could go. I could go. Kevin, we are going to punish you by going back to the uh, legal documents. Uh, uh, this no. is the, Tony joined us a little late, but Tony, uh, I pulled up all of the uh, authority of the commissioner and factors that may can be considered and all the stuff from the Big Ten Sportsmanship Guidelines, just so everyone's on the same page. We're not all going, well, I saw a guy on Twitter say, like, no, 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 we're going to go right to the source. So here we go, straight to the source. Are we going to 10-2-3 now? 
10 to 3 factors that may be considered. Man, good luck keeping yourself uh, from just jumping up and dancing around the room as I read through this one. Factors that may be considered when deciding upon disciplinary action. Tony, in case you joined us late, and we know you did, uh, we've already established that Tony Petiti has the authority to take action in this matter. Uh, in deciding whether to impose disciplinary action, factors to be considered by the commissioner may include, but shall not be limited to, the following. The general nature or severity of the offensive action, that feels like one of the things that may have gotten ratcheted up a little bit last night uh, on that conference call, uh, according to the reporting from Pete Thamel, any injury or damage that results directly from the offensive action. Uh, this would be great if I was a law talking guy and could tell you whether injury or damage would include, you know, hey, we didn't make the Big Ten, you know, Big Ten championship game or, you know, had a suffered a, uh, you know, a, a worse seed in the college football playoff or, you know, that, that's the Ohio State side, Penn State, you know, hey, Penn State, uh, you know, has how has this materially injured James Franklin in terms of reputation or uh, salary or whatever? I don't know if that also is, compl is uh, covered there, but would be interesting to know uh, the manner in which the offensive action fits within the context of the rules of the game for the sport at issue seems relevant. Any action taken or imposed in accordance with the applicable rules of the game, e.g. actions taken by game officials, uh, the response of and or any action taken by the evolved member institutions, the response of and or any action taken by any other entity that may have jurisdiction over the offensive action, e.g. law enforcement, any prior off offensive actions as contemplated within this policy. I mean, though they don't all apply, but certainly I would say m at least two to three of those seem like those are pretty directly applicable in this situation. I don't think you need all of them to apply. Do you like this? No, is, no. These are no. individual things. It's not a, a, you know, if this, then this, then this. It's like if it's one of these, then there's something that can be done. And um, one of the things that has annoyed me about this is the the idea that when the coaches go talk to Pete Thamel, Michigan fans think that, well, why don't the coaches put their name out there? Why don't why are they being anonymous about it? And that's something that I've been saying about like complaining about NIL. But the coaches aren't being anonymous when they're talking to Tony Petiti. Like it's computer screen to computer screen. It's phone to phone. It's things like that. So like there's no anonymity when you're talking to the commissioner. The anonymity, I, I'd be fine if they went out in public and said stuff, but it's not going to change anybody's minds because Michigan fans are entrenched that this is no big deal. And they can find one coach or three coaches that say it, but if there's 13 that say it is a big deal, they don't, it doesn't factor with their thought process. So even if they put names to it, you would just have responses like you're, you're you keep crying, cope harder, cry harder, all of those things. That's what we get from, that's what the coaches would get on social media or wherever, because I, I, I can't even, Look at my mentions. I started tweeting at like seven o'clock this morning, and I've been <laughs> running around until now. And I don't even want to. I don't even want to go near my Twitter right now. I have, and it's because I know what all of the responses money. are going to be. Engagement yeah, equals what? money. Hmm. Well, that's why I hit and run. I just tweet and run. <laughs> well, that's that's, and then mute. that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it, and 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 turn off the mentions and everything else. I mean. Only one of us up here on here had an image that got like 60 billion views, and it's the one of us that's not monetizing it. And it's, mm. uh, you know. I, I do like the fact that Tony is tweeting right now, like, you know, the hero in every movie where he, you know, throws the grenade and then just turns and coolly walks away as everything blows up behind him. That's that's Tony on Twitter right now. So, uh, the hero would jump on it. <laughs> uh, Tony, the hero uh, Kevin. Or the Joker. Kevin, it's time for another exciting graphic. Here we go. 10.3 procedural elements. Get your foam fingers out. We are good. We are going to be just doing some more law talking. Commissioner's discretion, timeliness, and due process. The commissioner has the discretion to pursue or choose not to pursue an investigation as to whether an offensive action has occurred. In the event the commissioner decides to pursue such an investigation, the commissioner shall, shall commence the investigation as expeditiously, that means fast, Kevin, as possible upon notification that such an offensive action may have occurred. That means occurred, Tony. Upon commencement of such an investigation, the commissioner shall determine as expeditiously as possible whether an offensive action did occur. Any involved institution or individual at risk of disciplinary action shall be provided an opportunity, which may be waived, 
to offer its or his or her position as to whether an offensive action occurred, the time frame within which an institution or individual shall provide its or his or her position shall be set by the commissioner and shall be reasonable in light of the circumstances. Upon determination that a defensive action did occur, the commissioner shall, as expeditiously as possible, determine whether disciplinary action should be imposed, and if so, what it should be. 10.3.2, notice of disciplinary action in the event that it becomes clear that an institution is likely to be subjected to disciplinary action, the commissioner shall notify that institution or individual at the earliest reasonable opportunity. Under no circumstances shall the commissioner comment publicly regarding either an investigation or disciplinary action without having first provided notice to any involved institution or individual. That last part, while very exciting, is also very important. It means until, you know, Michigan will know that there is an investigation or a disciplinary thing going on before the Big Ten can put anything out publicly. So you have to, you know, there is sort of an order of operations here where this stuff has to happen in a certain order. The Big Ten must notify Michigan officially before something comes out. So you may hear grumbling from Michigan people, you know, if and when this becomes official. And, you know, the, the if is a very important caveat that we need to throw in all of this. But if this does happen, Michigan has to get notified before the Big Ten says anything publicly about it. And this is kind of a, a mini NCAA investigation in, in that the the Big Ten comes with their findings and the, Michigan has a time frame to respond, a time frame of Tony Petiti's choosing. Like with the NCAA, you get like 90 days to respond. Who knows what type of time frame the Big Ten would set. But also, I, I wonder if the call last night with the with the coaches is to determine whether or not to start an investigation. Uh, or get their thoughts on that and then or get their thoughts on how angry all of those coaches are going to be when you don't you know start an investigation and when you're like well you know it's just uh, we'd rather not we'd, we'd rather not dig into this hole and find what we might but uh, i think at the very least this is i'm sure tony petiti was asked to start an investigation by those coaches and if he doesn't then you're encouraging everybody else to go and spend whatever and do whatever to go ahead and on-site scout future opponents all kinds of electronic means that you can find every Deion sanders is going to have spyglass apparel that all coaches and players are going to have now so there's there, you're, you're, the precedent that you're setting by not doing anything is encouraging everybody to do as much as they want, and then they will just point back to, you said it was okay. Well, yeah, sometimes in I mean inaction means well, then you're you're fine with this, you're accepting this, and nothing is going on. And you know something that I know that we have on our docket to talk about is you know if an investigation happens and further punishment or punishment uh, ensues. Does Michigan try to pick up its ball and go elsewhere? Uh, that seems to be a, a, a fan favorite out there because, you know, everybody else has got moving boxes going on. I mean, why not? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure there are places where where this this level of uh, rule infraction is, is smiled upon. Yeah, I, I think the uh, – yeah, I, I, I mean – First, first of all, the, yeah, we'll, we'll get let's let's just get to the SEC later. I don't want to I don't want to derail everything. I have more exciting law slides. I'm to trying to through. keep people engaged. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're over there. You're whatever the guy from Ferris Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Yeah. I mean, and all of the, I mean, honestly, people think that I'm trolling Tom. I'm not trolling Tom. All this stuff is very <laughs> important. It all sets the scene. We weren't going to give you homework. <laughs> you can't come into the chat until you read all these bylaws. <laughs> I've already proven what happens in, in, in journalism law if you're given freedom. You just don't do it. So, uh, yeah, you've got to, we have to set all this so then we don't have to talk about it again. We can say, as we said earlier. Yes, and, and also we want to make sure when we're talking about stuff, this is as much of a we are fact-checking ourselves. We want to make sure everything we're saying is correct. So we are going directly to the source. This is how you do it. If you are a reporter and you are a journalist, you go directly to the source. You get the information. And then you report accordingly. You don't just make stuff up. Te Kevin, let's go directly to 10.3.3, standard disciplinary action. This one's a short one, so I'm excited Th about this. This is a one. short one. Stay blessed. 10.3.3, uh, categories of disciplinary actions, standard disciplinary action. 
this is the stuff that Tony Petiti can do without getting any further approval. This is just, if Tony Petiti looks at it and goes, yeah, that's bad, here is what he can do. Standard disciplinary actions shall include admonishment, that means saying you did a bad thing, reprimand, pretty much the same thing, fines that do not exceed $10,000, and suspensions for no more than two contests. Any combination of the preceding actions shall be considered to be a singular standard disciplinary action. Decisions by the commissioner to impose a standard disciplinary action shall be final and are not subject to appeal. So essentially what this means is if Tony Petiti says, and this is purely hypothetical, I'm not saying this is what he's going to do. If Tony Petiti looks at this and says, okay, um, Jim Harbaugh, you did a bad thing. You are suspended for two games. Michigan has no recourse whatsoever, and Jim Harbaugh is just suspended for two games because this is the Big Ten's sportsmanship policy that, that Michigan has agreed to in advance, and it is very clear there. Decisions by the commissioner to impose a standard disciplinary action shall be final and are not subject to appeal. So that's the stuff that he can do with no recourse in terms of what Michigan could do in terms of, you know, hey, we disagree. That is all within the commissioner's uh, sort of umbrella. Next up, calm yourselves down, calm yourselves down. Next up, we're going to get to what does he have to go to the uh, Big Ten, uh, you know, board of, uh, you know, whatever the heck it is. It's like the Jegs or something. I don't remember. It's a. Yeah. This is why. This is why I have the. This is why I have the slides. Uh, but it's okay. We have a super chat that we need to get to now. All right. Let me. Let me jump off of this. All right. Let yeah. me Pick that off, and then let me. Ah, uh, got all sorts of pages to go through. There we yes. go. Mike Perino. Super chat from Mike Perino. Been a pretty wild twenty-four or so hours. I was at about a ten percent chance something was going to happen yesterday, especially after the President Ono tweet that was University of Michigan present tweeting out a picture of him with the Michigan football team a couple weeks ago in uh, some sort of generally positive words and uh not mentioning that the picture was from a couple weeks ago and the picture also included connor stallions which um was a choice to make uh sorry to continue mike's uh mike's uh super chat last night's news brings my thoughts back to 50 percent ish when we were in was it madison last week talking about um like the friday arrival video we were thinking or at least i was that it was north of 50 that something was going to happen this season in terms of punishment and then as the dry, the dripping of the news kind of slows down for a couple days you're like well it doesn't seem like anything's going to happen but it's like everything is moving so quickly in our mind but it can only move so quickly because you do have to have a back and forth you do have to do interviews you do have to get information gather information. What does this information mean? Take this information to somebody else. What do you think this information mean? What what does all of this entail? And so there's just so much piecing all of this together and uh, they've got a, a ton of puzzle pieces. I think I said to somebody on Twitter, they're still waiting for like the corner pieces of the puzzle, like maybe to, to start bridging everything and putting everything together and have a, a better idea of what it is. But you've got the box. You know what, you know what you're putting together here. You know what this looks like and you just need to continue to construct the puzzle but i am am, am i still uh, at 50 percent? i don't know because it seems like the um what you're reading there from the bylaws and the procedural stuff that you're still there's still a if the big 10 can only move so fast and now will this ability of tony petiti to <laughs> hand down a nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollar fine um admonish somebody and then also say this is also a reprimand by the way so don't think this is just an admonishment this is also a reprimand so this is doubly bad this is going on and your then, record exactly and and then throw in a two game suspension it would be interesting to see what two games those were and that's the, the longer this goes on the bigger those games the, the suspension for those games would be so i don't know if this is just one of these right now we're just gonna fine you but even that is admitting something went wrong. That is saying you've done something wrong. And so once you start that ball rolling, then it's like, well, okay, but it was more than just a, a $10,000 fine, don't you think? All right, so let's get to what take what what it takes to get more than a $10,000 fine. Jordan Kapler's got oh, a super chat good. there. We got we to gotta, we gotta clear it. I'm going to need right. a cigarette after this. Smoking's bad, okay? But, yeah, it's... Uh, okay. It's, it's it's something it's something i i've seen some things through the years of covering athletics and um 
if you're an Ohio State fan and you just you you deal in the misery business of the team up north, this is uh, this is your jam. All right, now you know what's my jam: more law talking. All right, ten point mm-hmm. three point three point two major disciplinary action. Disciplinary actions exceeding those listed in Agreement 10.3.3.1 above, again, which is like a $10,000 fine and a two-game suspension at the most. Anything above and beyond that must receive prior approval by the Joint Group Executive Committee, JGEC. (laughs) I can't wait to say JGEC a million times. What a time to be alive. Uh, In any case for which prior approval is sought, the JGEC shall be provided in writing the involved institutions or individual position as listed in agreement 10.3.1 above. The JGEC may only approve, deny, or lessen the proposed penalty. It shall not increase the proposed penalty. Further, the JGEC may not lessen the penalty to a lower level, a level lower than that for which its approval is required. Review and action by JGEC shall include shall occur as expeditiously as possible, and its decisions shall be final and are not subject to approval. 10.3.3.2.1 Interim Action Prior to receiving approval, the commissioner may imp- impose as interim action any lesser disciplinary action, any, i.e., any disciplinary action for which prior approval would not be required, which shall be in effect until the JGEC has had the opportunity to review and act upon any proposed major disciplinary actions. Okay. So the second part there means Tony Petiti mm. could say, uh, hey, you're suspended for two games and it might turn into more later. The other thing that's uh, real notable there, uh, I'm just going to read back the uh, last sentence there. Um, Review and action by JGAC shall occur as expeditiously as possible, needs to happen fast, and its decisions shall be final and are not subject to appeal are not subject to appeal. Does that mean they... Uh, I've heard that lawyers we could get involved if the Big Ten chooses to punish Michigan. I mean, I, I have seen Big Ten decisions which will not be revisited get revisited, but this seems pretty clear that shall not be subject to appeal means shall not be subject to appeal. Yeah, difference between the uh, bylaws and the statement on an email, basically, in terms of the shall not be revisited, not subject to appeal. I do think maybe JGEC may have been the alias that Connor Stallions used on the Central Michigan sideline. I wonder if the JGEC is like the UN Security Council, where you know that Russia is going to vote everything down or whatever. If Michigan is part of the JGEC. And they sit like in this little circle. And it's like, nope, 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 nope. And they just can veto, veto everything. I mean, it's all sorts of images. Because I had not gone to the effort to read all the bylaws yet. I mean, I kind of was familiar with, I, th- I thought, how the process worked through the Big Ten. But, you know, Tom's research has, has brought a lot of new things to light of how this whole thing is going to work. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been trying to just get a, an image of the five stages of grief in here right now just for Michigan to figure out on the roadmap where they are right now at this moment, other than in our chat telling us how stupid we are. Hmm. Well, that's the first time anyone's ever said that about any of us. So yeah. somewhere in here, you, no, somewhere in here is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling to the actual document because I believe it or not, I did not screenshot the entire thing. Somewhere in mm-hmm. here, there was a, uh, there was a uh, a thing about you know that you you didn't you you basically would be recused if you uh, you know so if if Michigan is on the JGEC I don't think they would have right of refusal uh, like the UN Security Council so that that would probably not uh, that would probably not uh, come into come into play there I mean Jim Harbaugh was according to this Pete Thamel report uh, was not. Mm-hmm. Uh, was not on the call last night so that teams could, um, uh, here it is, 10.3.3.2.2. Oh, man, that's a lot of numbers. Recusal and temporary replacement. You're just going to have to listen to me. Any member of JGEC whose institution is involved in an incident for which approval of a major disciplinary action is sought shall be recused and temporarily replaced by an individual or individuals representing an institution or institutions not involved in the incident at issue 
if either the current or incoming chair or co-chairs of the faculty representatives is or are to be recused, any such member of JGEC shall be temporarily replaced by at least one member of the faculty representatives who most recently served as chair or co-chair of the faculty representatives. It goes on from there, but uh, the, the uh, TLDR is no. If you are on the punishment committee, you don't get to vote no on getting any punishments. Ooh, comment there from CB, CBJ Buckeye One. Adam Rittenberg just confirmed the athletic director's meeting with Petiti for later today. Likely to uh, get their thoughts, to share uh, the coaches' thoughts on all that. Not that the not that the ads don't already know what their coaches are saying, but this is the next step. And then uh, I assume university presidents and chancellors oh, after the yeah. ads. I mean, this is seems like things are escalating. At least at least with the Big Ten, we've been wondering when the big 10 was going to actually start talking about this and you know they don't necessarily have an investigation arm like the ncaa so they would need to get that ball rolling so uh it is interesting to see all of this happening now and of course once this meeting happens there'll be more reports out from that about the vast majority of athletic directors did not like it and or whatever and the athletic directors have to speak on this more than just football because they wouldn't want this happening in any of their sports. They wouldn't want cheating to deal with cheating in any of their sports. And so uh, I don't, I don't expect there are going to be too many athletic directors that are saying, yeah, we're fine with it. You know, it's everybody does it. It's just, it's just sports, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I'll be interested to see what happens there. And then, as I said, what the next meeting is, I assume it would be presidents and chancellors. That does feel like where it would potentially be headed. And, you know, I, I would assume that you are correct that if the football coaches are annoyed by this, and it seems from all of the reporting that they are, that their bosses are probably also annoyed by this because, you know, all the all the stuff that this impacts, you got to remember, this is not just the football game, the score on the, the field. Let's just, we're just going to use Penn State here as an example. I don't know where Penn State stands based on James Har uh, Franklin's public statements uh, in the interview a week or so ago, I have a sense he's not a big fan of it. But if you are Penn State and you are fundraising to renovate your stadium, it feels like, hey, if you had a big win over Michigan, people get excited and people maybe get the checkbooks out. That's the kind of stuff athletic directors care about, you know, above and beyond just the competitive piece of this. There are financial implications to this as well. I'm sure Michigan has done better in fundraising the last couple of years after beating Ohio State a couple times, winning the Big Ten a couple times than they did during the, you know, late stage Brady Hoke era, for example. So this, you know, this is the kind of thing that it, it'll it impact a lot of different areas. But, you know, the fact that, you know, follow the money. What's, what's, number, what's the number one rule? Follow the money. If this is something that has probably materially hurt fundraising at places, that's going to tick people off, even if they're not necessarily ticked off just by the on-field stuff. And every indication is they are ticked off by the on-field stuff. Super chat from Red John. UM will sue if Big Ten bans right now. More evidence over offseason. Maybe opponents get helmet mics. Next season, bowl ban and wins vacated. Hashtag justice for Jim. Kevin, will you please punch up the major disciplinary action slide again? Yeah, let me take this. I mean, we had to read our super chat. Let me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 points. You know, points. I, I got the name. You, you did yeah. a really good job of naming these, so I, I can find them. 10.3.3.2, major disciplinary action. Disciplinary actions exceeding those listed in the agreement 10.3.3.1 above must receive prior approval by the Joint Group Executive Committee, JGAC. In any case for which prior approval is sought, the JGAC shall be provided in writing the involved institutions or individual's position as described in agreement 10.3.1 above. The JGAC may only approve, deny, or lessen the proposed penalty. It shall not increase the proposed penalty. Further, the JGEC may not lessen the penalty to a, lower, a level lower than that for which its approval is required. Review and action by JGEC, listen closely, shall occur as expeditiously as possible, listen even more closely, and its decision shall be final and are not subject to appeal. Michigan, Michigan signed the terms and conditions when they joined the conference, right? So you agreed to the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions say shall not be subject to appeal, which... Again, I do not have a law degree, but shall not be subject to appeal seems pretty black and white to me. You join the Shriners, you know you have to drive in the parades in the little cars with the hats on. I mean, you know what the rules are when you sign up for the organization. You can't come back out and be like, we didn't know. I mean, you, you, 
you had a team of lawyers and everything else, and you probably, you know, as a founding member of the conference, helped shape a lot of the bylaws and everything else. And then now you can't sit there and say they're not convenient to us. Our our cheating plans are way more complicated than anything you could ever figure out with any of this. So, yeah, I mean, you can sit there and throw bluster. Every, I mean, Michigan fans can throw bluster all they want that we're going, we're going to sue you back into the Stone Age, but that doesn't change anything. You signed up for the organization, and you're stuck. You're stuck at that point. Uh, well, I do think, obviously, obviously, Shriners understand the cars thing because that's basically why you join so that you can drive the fun cars during the parade i'm not sure what else they do there but that's one of the top things of course todd doyle says they can suspend jim the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator with pay until it's resolved they can suspend i mean they can do anything it sounds like and we don't know what they're going to do we're just saying that by their rules that every member agreed to they seem to have a pretty broad swath of options available to them and there is nothing there listed as but you can't do this this is you know this is but this is a bridge too far there is okay you can do these things including a up to two game suspension as we mentioned earlier without approval from the uh, jgec but there's nothing there that says you can't say uh you have to forfeit all your games and uh you're ineligible for the big 10 championship game they could say that that's a possibility. They, they, the Big Ten, I don't think, would have authority over the college football playoff. The college football playoff would be able to make a decision on their own. But if the Big Ten says uh, you're suspended, um, then you know the college football playoff, if Michigan loses a game, would probably look at that as a thank you very much. Now we don't have to make a decision. We can just say, well, they lost, so now it's not our problem. We don't know what the big the college football playoff is going to do. They, I, I have, did not go through their bylaws. We'll get to that if it comes to that. But this is the more immediate stuff based on the reporting from last night. And you know, there's there's a lot of people that you know Ohio State. You know, they're not going to do anything to, uh, you know, get rid of the Ohio State Michigan game this year. I don't think anyone's expecting that. But if you're suspending, whoever, I mean, just to use the last person's example, Harbaugh and uh, the offensive coordinator, uh, Sharon Moore, and the defensive coordinator, um, Jesse Minter, whatever. You're suspending those three guys. You're still playing the game. I don't think there's any reason to think that the Ohio State-Michigan game is not going to happen this year. Oh, but you could suspend them from being eligible for the postseason, for, for the Big Ten championship game. You can, you, you can wipe that out. You can mm-hmm. say, are, pending this investigation, ineligible for there, we're going to suspend XYZ, uh, XYZ coaches. Those are the things that you're going to have there, I would think, from the JGAC if, if, if it gets to that point. And then, you know, I think as more stuff comes out, then then you could sit there and, and see where the NC2A goes with a notice of allegations and everything else. And that that's where record books get altered and things of that nature. But I think that things that could come out of the Big Ten office are suspensions, and ineligibility for for Indianapolis if if Michigan were to get to that point. Yeah, you can't punish the other schools and take those games away and take those gates away and the TV revenue because of something that Michigan has done. So you play the games and whatever happens there happens there. But if if they want to punish, they can find their way to punishment. Um, can I can I discuss the the turn on Wednesday when? Like everybody at ESPN turned on Michigan, and yeah, oh, that's pretty interesting. And uh, it comes out the day after the college football playoff committee says, until there, these are just allegations, until there's more proof, we're not going to do anything about it. And then you had, I don't know, Stephen A. Smith, Paul Feinbaum, Peter Burns, uh, one of the basketball people, uh, obviously, Pete Thamel is working, you know, working for ESPN, but like he's been on this well before anybody else, but like the, the talking heads have basically all started to come out against Michigan at this point. And I made a mention on Twitter that it's, it's like they just realized ESPN just realized they're no longer a big 10 partner. And I do wonder what kind of impact that's going to have with the college football playoff committee when they're being inundated with the talking heads, just confirming to the ether to their viewers that Michigan is cheating. I did find it interesting that then Tim Brando tweeted out last night and he's a Fox Fox employee 
basically kind of in defense of Michigan. And I, I wonder if we're starting to see the the onset of the ESPN versus Fox thing. And how, also how much of this is ESPN and the SEC seeing the potential for the Big Ten getting two programs in the playoffs and not wanting to have that happen again. And so uh, is it time to now go all in on Michigan and uh, just make it make people aware that this isn't uh, some people don't like what's happening there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels like there's been a lot that's come out since the initial thing where I mean, I, I didn't even watch the Paul Feinbaum. I haven't watched the old Paul Feinbaum or the new mm. Paul Feinbaum. But there was, you know, he was cited in some of the initial Michigan uh, response to this, you know, from like blogs, not from like the school, but just reporters or blogs or whatever, saying like, look, Paul Feinbaum doesn't think it's a big deal. I mean, a lot of stuff has come out between then and now. And I think the story has changed. And, you know, sometimes we're privy to stuff that hasn't come out yet. And, you know, that that is probably, you know, you're hearing it from people who would know if there was some smoke there and it feels like there's more stuff still to come out. You wonder if some of that has gotten around to some of the folks in Bristol. That could be part of it. it there's just, there's a lot of different possibilities there. But, you know, I mean, there was, we talked about this earlier and I don't remember if I actually threw this in the, no, I didn't throw it in the show title, but okay. So the idea that Michigan, if they get, you know, some kind of punishment that hurts them this year, that Michigan is going to jump to the SEC. Like, this is <laughs> the kind of thing you would expect to see from an egg Twitter account with zero followers. And uh, instead, I saw it from one of, if not the most prominent Michigan uh, media folks uh, in the middle of the night. And I will typically sort of give a little grace to middle of the night tweets because sometimes there's some inspiration behind them. But this is also, I've seen this reported in the middle of the day, too. So it's not just a, you know, divinely inspired tweet in the middle of the night. It is something that's actually a thought. And it's, well, Michigan will just jump to the SEC if this happens. Tony, I want you to pick a number between 1 and 17, and that will be uh, I, that will be the reason number that, uh, I, that this is the dumbest idea I have ever heard in my entire life. Pick a number between 1 and 17. 17. 17. Hey, um, you know how the Big Ten people were annoyed at the fact that maybe their signs got stolen and maybe that, you know, affected competitions on the field? Did any SEC team show up on Connor Stallion's list, apparently, allegedly? Were, mm -hmm. Have there been any rumors about other SEC teams who Michigan never actually played who might have been uh, spied upon, who might have had some of their signals? Maybe, we don't know, but at least rumors that some of that might have gotten pu uh, pushed along. Did, did, did any, any of this sounding at all familiar to you, Tony? Yeah, well, and you also have Tennessee fans who believe that Michigan spying is what got Hendon Hooker hurt and, you know, cost them a chance at the playoffs and having uh, an opponent having advanced information on what you're going to do, put your quarterback in the, uh, more more danger than... Than not so yes tom that would be one um where would the media rights fall what number is that for you tom well that's that's number three and these are just in a random order but uh, and then, number three falls number into three, mike marino super chat right sure here. does super chat for mike marino isn't michigan locked into the big 10 until 2030 with a new tv contract similar to acc teams why yes mike they sure are the big 10 just signed a new tv deal that went into effect this year seven year deal Go, it ends after the 2029-2030 academic year. So here's what happens. They, Michigan has signed over their grant of rights as part of that deal. But what your grant of right means is you have taken your TV rights and you have given them to your conference. And this is just a way that it just is, you know, look at us. We're all handcuffed together. No one can leave. We're all in this together. Every Big Ten member signs it. So every Big Ten member, their TV rights go to the conference and then the conference distributes them. So if Michigan decided they wanted to take their ball and go home tomorrow because they were so mad right now, then they can go. They can do that. They can go to the SEC, but the rights for all of their home games in their new SEC home all go to the Big Ten. So that feels like that's probably not super viable financially. Yeah. 
yeah i mean i it's it's insane and it's it, again it, it's it's a it's a reactionary statement and it's like well i i'm gonna go over and go play in that yard instead without really thinking things through and i would say that cooler heads you know and thoughts would prevail but we know in the middle of crisis that that generally takes a little bit of time and everything else, but that is just, you know, there's 0% chance of that happening just as much as the talk of, you know, we're going to, we're going to sue the conference and everything else. I mean, you signed the bylaw, you, you signed the deal to be in the league. You, you've probably helped shape the bylaws. You're, 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 you're in it, buddy. You're in it, buddy. Super chat from mellow number seven. Yeah. Being the number one team in America is considered being down bad. Thumbs down. Eyes rolled. Typical Michigan fans that drink that Flint tap water. Oof. You know, mellow, mellow number seven is not having it with all of our, all of our visitors in the chat right now, but uh, there's, you know, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. And Mika Hanna saying that mellow is savage with a lot, a lot of emojis there. It is good to know that the if this was happening at, at at Ohio State, that Michigan fans wouldn't be interested in it. Wouldn't be interested in watching people talk about it. Wouldn't be interested in talking about it or reading about it. They would everybody, just be like, "What's all the fuss about?" Everybody, it's just it's just a hamburger. It's just a hamburger. What are we talking about here? I did see someone in the chat saying that Michigan fans weren't worried about Urban Meyer and Zach Smith in 2018. They were just worried about getting better to beat Ohio State. Who here is old enough to remember the year of our Lord, 2018? Any show of hands? Yeah. 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 Mm. I know T Gek is all over that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and, and Tom, as you have mentioned many times, we're, we're all old enough to remember when Michigan folks thought uh, online courses was cheating. Yes, that was, uh, that was, and you know what? Listen, what happened in 2020? That was in 2019. What happened in 2020? COVID. What did, what did schools have to do in 2020? Online classes. What happened in 2021? Michigan hired Karn Stallions. I mean, do I need to connect the dots for you, Tony? This has been one long straight line from online classes. It's like the meme with the dominoes where you're tipping the dominoes over and it starts with a little one and it's like, you know, uh, Wuhan, whatever. Uh, Wuhan, uh, whatever you want to believe about how that all started. Uh, and then uh, the end in uh, Tony Petiti got yelled at by a bunch of Big Ten coaches last night on the phone. I, I mean, do I have to draw a line for you? God, I would have loved to have been on that call just to be able to listen to that call. Uh, Red John, this is a little bit of a deep cut. Uh, this is from the mm -hmm. 2017 Oklahoma game when college game day was on campus for Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State recused themselves from Micah Parsons because of a picture. You know, Micah Parsons was taken up on the like platform uh, during college game day by an Ohio State uh, person, you know, tour guide or whatever it was. Uh, and that was considered a violation and Ohio State said, you know what, we're just not gonna, yeah, they, they sort of withdrew from the Micah Parsons recruitment and he went on to uh, be pretty darn good at Penn State and pretty darn good at, uh, with the Dallas Cowboys right now, I think, yes. right? Yes. yes, all right. You what can tell he's a big <laughs> NFL player because I know where he's playing. Yes. I, can can we just address the whole um, sign stealing thing that everybody has sign stealers? The side the Michigan people that are just latching onto the fact that it's just side sign stealing. It's on the sidelines. Everybody does it. And I saw somebody responded to one of my tweets this morning with uh, one of the screenshots from the athletic thing saying uh, thirty three of the fifty coaches have sign stealers on their staff this is in-game stuff that they're talking about. And that's what everybody, not, well, not everybody does it. Many people, many, many programs do it. They're trying to decipher signs while the game is going on. This is not what Michigan has reportedly done. Connor Stallions has sent people out to get video to acquire things electronically and has been an integral part of that process, allegedly and reportedly. That's vastly different than what we're talking about in terms of what what other programs do and they're not sending people out this is the first time we've ever seen anything on this scope arguably possibly the biggest possible cheating scandal in a college football re, re, re uh, recent history in terms of modern day history so this is not sign stealing this is traveling uh, funding uh, a network 
some would call it a vast network, the vast, the vastest, if you will, of ways to gain an advantage that are against the rules. Again, against the rules. And I know there are Michigan fans who are saying, and Michigan uh, bloggers who have said, yeah, but the NCA wanted to get rid of one of those rules about advanced scouting in person. Yeah, but they didn't. It's still one of the rules, and that's not the only rule that is being violated. There's also the the, the violation of recording signals on site, things like that. Uh, no, there's no uh, rule, in, particular rule about sunglasses that have recording. But the, the there are electronic things that you can't record electronically, and there's no like the 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 number of um, yeah, but it doesn't say this or it doesn't say that or you can the, the the new one is the NCAA allows third party scouting, and that's what Counter Stallions was funding was third party scouting, except those third parties have to be uh, like licensed and approved by the the NCA and conferences and things like that. I don't think a D three coach, former D three coach, doing it for five hundred bucks is necessarily licensed, especially when he's not going to give his name. And uh, I mean, if we want to talk about anonymity and how that's terrible. Then uh, is is that okay? Is it okay to be anonymous in all of this? So I just uh, the just to not that it's going to change anything because as I've said, like Jim Harbaugh can come out and say, "Yeah, we did it. We stole signs. We had this uh, elaborate scheme," and you're still going to have a, a segment of Michigan fans saying, "It's just Jim. You don't know ball. That you everybody does it. You don't really gain an advantage from stealing signs." Well, yeah. I mean, imagine if this was like the NFL, and I know the rules are different in the NFL in terms of advanced scouting and things like that, but you deflate some footballs, and I mean, that was like on TV more than Swift and Kelsey were are on TV right now. Imagine if this was going on in the National Football League and just the outrage and just the wall-to-wall -wall media coverage. We're, we're just kind of getting to the tip of the iceberg right now that ESPN and ESPN outside of its actual reporters, its personalities are talking about it. Pete Thamel's done a great job throughout. I've known Pete back since his Yahoo days. Just imagine just the groundswell that will be there. And I throw this out to Tom and, and, and Tegek. What are the odds that we're going to have to stop on our way to Rutgers to do an emergency show? I'm putting it at about 50-50. We thought that last week, this is the Big Ten has blessed us with back to back road trips to drive to Madison, Wisconsin, and then Piscataway, New Jersey, which are uh, not close together and not close to Columbus. Back to back weeks. So, and last Friday, I, I was messaging these guys like, hey, we need to kind of have a plan, like just in case something major happens that we might just have to pull off the road and talk to the good folks on YouTube.com for a while because. And we didn't have to do it last week. Stuff has continued to sort of come out. And, you know, the fact that there was a coach's call last night, and now according to Adam Rittenberg from ESPN, there's going to be an AD call later on today. And I just I want to read his tweet just so we're providing all the context here. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam Rittenberg, Big Ten athletic directors have a call with Commissioner Tony Petiti for later today per source, likely more follow-up on Michigan situation. So... You know, we don't know for a fact that that's it, but it seems like that would be a logical conclusion to draw. Um, we know the Big Ten is dropping their 2024 schedule later, so maybe it's that. I don't know who's to say, but it's probably it's probably about the Michigan situation. And so, yeah, they, I, I don't know that I'm expecting something that soon, probably. I mean, it feels like this is going to be one of these, like, you need to according to the stuff we read earlier and we're coming up on the top of the hour which means i get to read the law stuff again soon yay as we welcome in new people uh smoke them if you got them <laughs> smoke them if you got them kids we're gonna be smoking the whole pack there's a lot of there's a lot of pdfs to go through but you know according to the stuff we read you know there could be an immediate um you know an immediate uh suspension of two games but then to do anything more than that, you need to have, you know, the reasonable amount of time to allow Michigan to respond and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm kind of going back and forth between do they put that out? You know, is there some sort of immediate action taken on Friday this week and, you know, for this weekend's game? Or do you wait, you get through this weekend, 
you do some of the back and forth response kind of process and then you drop it all at once w whatever they're going to do and and i don't you know i don't know that they're going to do anything that not doing anything mm -hmm. is a possibility here i don't want to act like oh we know exactly what he's going to do there are no punishments prescribed in there you know in terms of this particular rule breaking there are limits on what he can do by himself there's no limits on what he could do with the uh, JGEC. Well, if you're jumping on and wondering, what's a JGEC? Oh, friends, you just wait. We will go through it all. Don't you worry. But, you know, so, so you could do nothing. You could do something. Or in conjunction with, you know, in, in a little bit of a longer process, you could do more than something. So we and we don't know what he's going to choose to do because we don't know Tony Petiti at all. I mean, the, the, T, the, the Michigan people are saying, well, He's a TV guy, so he's going to make this based on TV decisions. He's also a former Major League Baseball guy. And when he was on the uh, Major League Baseball something or other committee, uh, he, what was it? MGEC. MGEC, yes, the Major League Baseball something or other. Um, <laughs> he, was part of, he was part of the committee that like nuked the Houston Astros for sign stealing. So you, you can look at the TV thing and say, okay, well, he's going to make a TV decision. Or you can do the like, hey, he was involved in a kind of similar situation and it didn't go great for the team involved. So you can kind of read whatever tea leaves you want to on this one. Well, why are we not talking about this being Ryan Day's fault? I mean, Robert Howard wants to know if it is all Ryan Day's fault, asking for a friend. Glass well, you Butterfly know, wants all the information. Yeah, Glasswing Butterfly wants us to catch her up. Don't worry, we'll get there. We'll we'll get four, there. Four minutes. We'll be at the top of the hour with uh, with a nice reset and everything else. This is not. We'll probably take you right up to the Ryan Day Radio Show on uh, on the Ohio State Sports Radio Network. Uh, the, the Jeffrey right. Barsky thing. What would what would you guys do if you had the power? I think obviously you still need all of the information, and the the thing there is. You can have some of the information, but that doesn't tell you who all was involved. So you need to get everything to figure out, uh, as they say, how deep it went. And then that's when you know all of the the punishments that you would lay down. But if, if this goes back to Kim Harbaugh, and then clearly there and it, you I think you can get that information before the season is over because you just have to talk to people and if they're lying, can you catch them in lies? And if they're not lying and Jim Harbaugh is, you have no proof that Jim Harbaugh has knowledge of this, then you have no proof that he has knowledge of it. But what proof do you have that other people had knowledge of it? Your, your coordinators, clearly the coordinators, why are you, why are you so emphatically trusting counter stallions? And then what was the, the, uh, the conversations you had with them and that, that got him hired or, or, what did he tell you? How did he acquire these, this knowledge? And did you even ask? Because if you don't ask, then that's because you don't truly want to know. And if you're, if you're going to hire somebody like, wow, you're really good at this. How do you do it? And he says, I can't tell you. Then either you're like, well, I can't hire you or, okay. Or yes, I will hire you. So there, the, there's levels to this that you have to figure out what they knew, what they willingly didn't want to know, because that's also not great. But it, in terms of the the two game suspension, I don't I don't expect anything to happen this week. So if you are going to suspend Jim Harbaugh for two games, you might want to do it the, the the those the the two weeks before Ohio State, and then imagine he returns for the Ohio State game and just the approval, the roar of approval that he would have from the crowd. It's like you know Maximus in the the arena as the conquering hero, and I don't know that. Tony Petiti or the Big Ten want that either? Well, I mean, no, probably not. And I mean, either way, that game is going to be a circus. I mean, that game is going to be a 2006 level, you know, on field, off field, everything about it, circus. I cannot wait for that game. It, I don't know what is going to happen between now and then. We may but have I know. to leave Thanksgiving dinner and just go right up to <laughs> Ann Arbor at that point, honestly. We might need to extend the hotel reservation no. and be there. Sorry, Tony. No, it's because – no. Which is to go, and we're going to have to go up there and have a marathon uh, show. It's not the turkey. It's the four 50-inch TVs that I plan on buying <laughs> for $180 total. So – 
I, I do want to get through there. I, I have been, if you've seen me like looking to the side and like smiling a bunch, the, the comment section has just been just perfect. Um, mm. What, one th- I mean, what is more fun than Ohio State and Michigan people just going back and forth at each other's throats just for an hour straight? I do want to punch this one up real quick uh, from Ninja Rob. He is a Michigan fan based on the, you know, preponderance of his, his, um, his messages, sign steal. It's a, he got he got uh, auto corrected here, but sign stealing really helped us with TCU toilet emoji. Um, so who wants to point out the funny thing about that? Tony. TK. Well, yeah the uh, the funny thing about that is they didn't necessarily have TCU signs. They didn't advance scout the Horn Frogs, and some would argue that's why they didn't win and struggled as much as they did in that game. And in fact, ended up losing in that game surprisingly as a considerable favorite. Maybe it's unrelated. Everybody and their uncle came in and said, Hey, guess what? Michigan steals signs. You might want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So they had all sorts of things in place. They, they knew going in and they, they had, plans for all of it and you know and you're going out there it's like the scene in animal house where they steal the 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 carbon copy of the test but the other house put the fake one in there and they all failed i mean it it, it, it's that's exactly what it is i'm 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 sorry i gotta jump off i gotta get on photoshop right now and start doing some things (laughs) uh super chat from david greenshield will this be the biggest game in the history of the rivalry and I always, I always thought 2006 would be impossible to top. Number one versus number two. Bo Schembechler passes away the day before the game. I mean, just the the emotions, the storylines in that stadium on that day were. I mean, I, I never thought you'd match it. And you've had so many great ones. I mean, you go back through the 70s and the the 10 year war, and you know the 1969 game up in Ann Arbor. Bo's first game, you have the, you know, the 2016 game, you have last year's game. I mean, there have been some great, great, you know, top four, top three kind of games. I don't think, I don't know if it's the biggest, but I don't think we've ever seen anything like what this could be in a couple weeks. Kevin? I I mean, I don't disagree. I mean, I think that Certainly when it comes to off the field things, yes, the the the, the tragic passing of Bo Schembechler around six was it was a huge one. I think that uh the uh you know the the, the first trestle game, you know, after you know three hundred and day three hundred and ten days after he delivered his comments, I think that you know, in terms of on the field, sixty nine when uh, when Michigan with Bo was able to beat the defending national champions, there certainly were a lot of things there. But we live in a world now with so much information and much of it misinformation, but so much information out there at our fingertips that this is going to be unlike anything that we have ever been witness to. I I, I really think that this is going to be something. And it's really going to be a great time to be a member of BuckeyeHuddle.com. I mean, get all of the lead up to the to the game. Make sure you don't miss a single thing, a single rumor, anything there. For the price of a crummy delivery pizza, you could have a month at Buckeye Huddle to to get you through the game. Give us a give us a chat uh, a chance. See what's going on. Go to the uh, the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby. Uh, Steakhouse Columbus, and be able to get all the insight from there. Mark Gibbler's recruiting information, great analysis from Ross Fulton, Devin Ratliff, uh, Michael Pettit, everything there. And, of course, Tom Tegek and myself all there on the board. You don't even have to wait for us to go on a chat. You get full access to us there at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And also be sure to check out WagerWire as well, another one of our sponsors. Sign up for their app. Use code BuckeyeHuddle. Uh, and that certainly would help us out as well. Thank you, K-Pop. I would also ask, uh, if you're watching now, go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this. That always helps us and helps YouTube find this show for other people. Uh, Before we get to the Super Chat, I think this game, as you said, Tom, it's going to be vastly different than any other game because of the circumstances surrounding it. Obviously, the, the playoff circumstances and then 
the cheating scandal, the gigantic, massive cheating scandal that is going on around the entire Michigan football program and everybody associated with it, the giant cheating scandal there. Um, but I also don't think the stakes of this game, like the results of this game will be what they are. But also I think it, the, the season might not exist for Michigan after this season in terms of I could see this game being wiped away or um, with their season already kind of – if you ask – National reporters or national talking heads, they'll tell you that the season has already become tainted for Michigan. So I don't know if it, it, we should give it more weight than it deserves, but if Michigan does beat Ohio State, they're going the, – the narrative there, and I don't know that it's entirely wrong, is like we don't need to cheat to win. And I would say you didn't need to cheat to win, and you've, you've proven that here, but that doesn't mean you didn't cheat to win every – you know, for the past three years. So – I think a, a loss for Michigan would be devastating to their storyline and to um, probably to Jim Harbaugh because he thought this entire thing was on the up and up the whole time. Well, it does. I mean, narratively, just setting aside the, you know, Big Ten championship, the college football playoff potential births and all of that kind of stuff, just narratively, if Michigan wins this year, then the narrative is exactly what everyone from the Michigan side is saying in the chat right now, which is this is all just Ohio State was scared and it didn't make any difference at all and nothing matters. And, you know, it's just Ohio State is, you know, a bunch of whiny crybabies. And if Michigan wins again this year, then that absolutely becomes the narrative. If Ohio State wins this year, then boy, how different did the last couple of years look where, it, hey, coincidentally, the two years that you had this guy on your staff out of the last 23 are two of the, what, four times in that span that you, you've you beaten Ohio State? Boy, what a coincidence that is. I wonder if you could draw any kind of a straight line between these two facts. There's, I mean, I don't know how much that matters anywhere other than the internet but hey we're all on the internet a lot so i guess that matters a lot so uh super chat from the buckeye businessman michigan should be removed from the big 10 they are now at the center of the biggest basketball scandal in ncaa history and now football they have proved that they are cheaters and always will be no room for that in the big 10 i mean you know we we talked earlier about the idea that michigan was going to take their ball and go to the sec and um i find that implausible I also find it pretty implausible that the Big Ten would boot Michigan over this. It, that's just not how these decisions get made. These are, these are decisions that get made over the span of years and decades and get made by people who probably broadly don't care that much about football or athletics at all. I mean, you think of Ohio State and Michigan as having enormous athletic departments and nine-figure budgets every year, and it's like, wow, that's a lot of money. On, on the scale of an, a university it's nothing. That's a rounding error on the scale of, you know, what the Ohio State University, Ohio State Medical Center, or University of Michigan, University of Michigan Medical School Center, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the, it, that's that's like a tiny speck in the corner of, you know, of the graph in terms of like at the money involved here, the number of people involved here. You're not you're not going to see, you know, the Big Ten's not kicking Michigan out. Michigan is not taking their ball and going home. No, that's just that's just people being mad right now. And this is not a decision that's going to get made in the next week. It's there's going to be years for something to settle, you know, everyone to sort of calm their bodies down and settle down and not make an emotional decision. That's, this is not a decision you make emotionally. You're not universities, despite what people might think, are not run by completely irrational idiots. I do want to agree with it's just me, Tim, 79, saying at least the Fab Five was fun to watch. They are very fun to watch. What is not fun to watch is the same Michigan game over and over and over and over again this season. But, you know, the things we do for the people. You know what I'm hearing right now? I'm hearing a hmm. law talk coming up. I think yes. that, I think oh. that, I think that Tom yes. is, uh, is jonesing for it. So here, you know, we're about, we're about 70 minutes mm -hmm. into the show. So I think it's time to reset for those of you who have joined mm -hmm. us here on the later side, welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. We are your Buckeye Huddle crew, uh, Tom Moore, Tony Gerdeman, and myself, Kevin Noon. This is the Big Ten and Tur Turmoil. Coaches want action now. What does it all mean, show? And, uh, you know, take it away, Tom, with all of your prepared slides, counselor. 
All right, so let's start. This is this is all from the Big Ten sportsmanship policy. So this is all the stuff that when you, when you're seeing Pete Thamel referencing, like here's what the commissioner can do. This is the direct document. We're not taking it from Pete Thamel. I went and found here's the direct document from the Big Ten. Ten point two authority of the commissioner. Ten point two point one executive exclusive authority to determine whether offensive actions have occurred. The commissioner shall have the exclusive authority to determine whether an offensive action is contemplated in agreement ten point oh point ten point oh one above has been committed by anyone referenced in agreement ten point one above. In making this determination, the commissioner may ex consider any evidence that he or she deems relevant. The commissioner may accept any information provided by any source, but expect except as outlined in agreement ten point three point one below has no formal obligation to do so. 10.2.2, authority to take disciplinary action. In the event the commissioner determines that an offensive action has occurred, the commissioner shall have the authority to impose any disciplinary action in response to the offensive action subject to the provisions of agreement 10.3.3.1 below. So what does this mean? The TLDR on this is just, yeah, the commissioner at Tony Petiti and the commissioner himself can determine whether any sort of offensive action has been committed. So whether there has been a violation that's up to Tony Petiti. That's not like, oh, you've got to have a whole thing. You, you know, you don't, this doesn't have to get run through the NCAA. This doesn't have to get run past the governor. It doesn't have to get run past Jim Harbaugh. Tony Petiti gets to make that decision. That is what that means. All right, real quick. Let's, we're going to try and blast through these a little bit faster than we did last hour, just in case we have people who are still on. Factors that may be considered. So this is just like, what, what are the violations that you could be looking for when you're when you're deciding what kind of punishment might be in line, whether there's a violation and what kind of punishment might be merited. Uh, in deciding whether to impose, dis, dis, impose disciplinary action, factors to be considered by the commissioner may include, but shall not be limited to, the following. A, the general nature or severity of the offensive action. B, any injury or damage that results directly from the offensive action. C, the manner in which the offensive action fits within the context of the rules of the game for the sport at issue. D, any action taken or imposed in accordance with the applicable rules of the game, e.g. action taken by game officials. E, the response of and or any action taken by the involved member institutions. F, the response of and or any action taken by any other entity that may have jurisdiction over the offensive action, e.g. law enforcement. G, any prior offensive actions as contemplated within this policy. I mean, real quick, any anyone see anything on that list that could apply to this situation based on the information that we currently have available to us? Well, I also like the fact that it says shall not be limited to, so there could be more that comes mm -hmm. up there. Like, you know what? This should be part of that as well because this is an, an unprecedented thing. You might have some unprecedented actions that didn't fall under the we, we the kind of things that you would think would happen when you when you start witnessing stuff that has never happened before, then maybe you might have to create some new rules or uh, something like that. So they've they've got the ground rules the, the they've laid out the ability to add rules to that as well, which is interesting. Is the FBI uh, law enforcement? I'm just asking for a friend. Uh, comment in the chat uh, from Michael Ensminger. These guys are dorks. No blue. Uh, Non-responsive, but okay. Not not necessarily inaccurate, but non-responsive. 10.3, Evan, procedural elements. 10.3.1. I don't know why anyone thinks we're dorks when we're reading through extremely dense legal <laughs> terminology right now. What, where, only, where, one sir, reading, only one of us is reading through it, dork. Where do you get off, sir? 10.3.1, commissioner's discretion, timeliness, and due process. The commissioner has the discretion to pursue or choose not to pursue an investigation as to whether an offensive action has occurred. In the event the commissioner decides to pursue such an investigation, the commissioner shall commence the investigation as expeditiously as possible upon notification that such an offensive action may have occurred. Upon commencement of such an investigation, the commissioner shall determine as expeditiously as possible whether an offensive action did occur. Any involved institution or individual at risk of disciplinary action shall be provided with an opportunity, which may be waived, to offer its or his or her position as to whether an offensive action occurred. The time frame within which institution or individual shall provide its or his or her position shall be set by the commissioner and shall be reasonable in light of the circumstances. Upon determination that an offensive action did occur, the commissioner shall, as expeditiously as possible, determine whether disciplinary action should be imposed, and if so, what it should be. 10.3.2, notice of disciplinary action. This is an important one because this is, here's what the first step is if any of this is going to happen. In the event it becomes clear that an institution is likely to be subjected to disciplinary action, the commissioner shall notify that institution or individual at the earliest reasonable opportunity. 
Under no circumstances shall the commissioner comment publicly regarding either an investigation or disciplinary action without having first provided notice to any involved institution or individual. That's an important one because that tells you, you know, if you hear the Big Ten is actively investigating or Tony Petiti starts talking about it, that means, you know, if Tony Petiti is talking about it, that means they have sent it to the, the sent to Michigan a notice of, of uh, you know, that they're investigating. That That is, you know, the, likely the first, the, you know, the next big step if something is going to happen, and we're still saying if something is going to happen, would be the Big Ten notifies Michigan that there's going to be an investigation. If they do that, that's, you know, that's step one, then the ball is rolling, and then, you know, there, there's a lot of at the discretion of the commissioner in that in terms of violations, in terms of timetables, you know, that he has to give them a reasonable amount of time. Well, what's a reasonable amount of time? Well, it sounds like that's up to the commissioner. I do think it's interesting that he can talk about it once once this is laid, once this is given to Michigan, he can release a statement or do whatever and uh, you're not going to hide not not, not going to totally hide under the fact that we can't talk about an ongoing investigation now it may just be there's an investigation ongoing or there have been some notice sent to michigan i can't talk about it beyond that but once if this happens there will be conversation about it so that is interesting to me um boy there are a lot of michigan fans in the chat i'm assuming they're also also hitting the thumbs up yeah, I'm sure. I think we'll get to the end of this, and it'll be like, oh, you have like eight thousand reactions, but four thousand of them, uh, four thousand of them are thumbs down. I think that we've probably made our way to one of their boards or something. I think. Well, that that just makes it more important for Ohio State fans and Penn State fans and Michigan State fans and Lord and knows whoever Georgia. else is in here. Truth and justice. Yes. Um, all right. So let's move on. Ten point three point three. Standard disciplinary action. Standard disciplinary actions shall include admonishment, reprimand, fines that do not exceed $10,000, and suspension from no more than two contests. Any combination of the preceding actions shall be considered to be a singular standard disciplinary action. Decisions by the commissioner to impose a standard disciplinary action shall be final and are not subject to approval. So that means that, uh, sorry, subject to appeal, sorry. So that means that if Tony Petiti looks at the situation right now and says, and, and looks at all the available evidence and Michigan has responded, and he looks at that and says, okay, something bad happened here. I would like to suspend any, you know, whoever he wants to, Jim Harbaugh, one of the coordinators, whatever, he can suspend them from no more than two contests, two games, without anyone else approving, without any say-so from anyone else, without any, you know, having to go to a higher level. And Michigan cannot appeal that. They are, it is a standard disciplinary action, shall be final, not subject to appeal. That's, you know, that's, you know, pretty, pretty black and white there. Not a lot of gray area there. Let's uh, hit that super chat real quick. I'm assuming it is Fish Nurse. I want a Connor Stallions action figure. I do too, with, you know, with removable, re- removable glasses. Uh, you can sit there and hit a button, and his Michigan gear turns into Central Michigan gear. And uh, actually, it doesn't say anything on the placard with the card because we don't know what name he's going by at any given time. But you can also s- scan the QR code to get the full Michigan manifesto, which is just an added bonus. Now, you do have to purchase the extra figure. You can't just get it from the back of the package. You're going to have to purchase it, open it up, which also... Is this an action figure you want to open up or you want to keep it in the box? That's the tricky part. You want, yeah, you, my suggestion buy two, play with one, collect the other, put it on the shelf. And I heard there were going to be three different ones because each one he was going to have a different set of signs. So you oh, want to make sure that you get the right ones. So, and then you also got to get the one where he's got the costume from Hoth, uh, from Empire. I think that is a, a, a notable one as well. So, so many out there also- collectibles. Yeah. He also has one where it has like the, the little rockets that come out of his back, but those are a choking hazard. So you don't want to you don't want to mm-hmm. open that one. Well, a lot of Michigan action figures are choking hazards. <laughs> oh, oh t Gek. Oh, t Gek. <laughs> All right. Let, let's hit the next couple super chats. Real quick. David, Kevin. <laughs> David Greetshield says, give me the first few questions you would ask the stallion. Where oh, did you man. get those fantastic sunglasses? <laughs> Um, hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's the, the question, like if you're truthfully going to get truthful answers, you're, you're going to want to know 
did anybody tell you to do this? Who did you tell? Because I, I completely imagine this starting out as his, his plan. No, yeah, who ordered? No, I, I see this being his, like he's a very eager dude. I think we can admit that being a volunteer coming from California to Michigan for games or whatever, whenever he was doing it at camps or whatever. Eager dude, loved, loved the university, loved the football program. So I can see him going above and beyond to come up with this plan and then saying, you know, I, I would believe that. I do believe that. That I don't believe that he was brought in to do this. I believe he was doing this and then got in because of it. And, but then in terms of who, who did you tell about this? How much did people know what you were doing, how you were getting it, that sort of thing? I think that's really what we want to know. That's really what the, the gist of how deep it went, who is, all, who is all going to be punished for this. And that answers the, the rogue staffer, which, again, you, you can be a rogue staffer, but then when you're next to the coaches during games and they're giving you such uh, trust and all of that, and, hey, it's just sign stealing. But what do the coaches know about how those signs were stolen and the lengths that went that were, were taken to get that stuff, that information? Just, you know, who else? knew about this entire thing and uh that's that's that'd be my question if i knew i was going to get a a true answer all right all right uh cory hart let's punch up the next super chat mike ferguson says because the next show feature everyone wearing sunglasses at night i mean i don't have any around here it's also 11 20 in the morning and it's sunny outside yeah. so it doesn't work i can't well. read anything because i now have my glasses off but yeah well i saw mike ferguson's uh Super chat there, and I was happy to oblige with a pair of beater sunglasses that, for some reason, was sitting on my computer desk. All right. Next up, Daniel says, you have to exchange your team's signs for purchase. I mean, we really have an idea here, TGAC, about the, these action figures. I mean, we're going to have to cut the person who suggested it in on our, on the deal, but I'm going to go get a 3D printer, and we're going to start working on this one right now. I mean... Uh, Portnoy can have his shirts or whatever where he misspells cologne. We can have the action figures. Ninja Rob uh, sharing hail to the victors valiant. Hail go blue. Thank you for the super chat, Rob. I've always appreciate that. Kurt says, I'm to sports today. Zach is dropping something else new and big. I have a feeling I know what that is. We have different editorial standards here. There's big, big news that has been hidden all the tea. Blue Wolverine says, go blue. I think we're caught up, which means okay. we've, got one, now, we've yes. got one more thing, and I think it's the one that is the most important. 10.3.3.2 yes. major yes. disciplinary action. Hit that 10.3.3.2 air horn. Bow, 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 bow. It's time to talk about major disciplinary action. Disciplinary actions exceeding those listed in agreement 10.3.3.1 above. That was the minor thing that Tony Petiti can do on his own. If you remember, we talked about that a couple minutes ago. Must receive prior approval by the Joint Group Executive Committee, JGEC. In any case for which prior approval is sought, the JGEC shall be provided in writing the involved institutions or individual's position as described in agreement 10.3.1 above. The JGEC may only approve, deny, or lessen the proposed penalty. It shall not increase the proposed penalty. Further, the JGEC may not lessen the penalty to a level lower than that for which its approval is required. So they could not say, like, actually, no, this is just a one-game suspension. They would have to at least get, you know, allow Tony Petiti to do uh, what he could do by himself. Review and action by JGEC shall occur as expeditiously as possible, and its decisions shall be final and are not subject to appeal. That is an important line. We will read that line to you again in a minute because there's been a lot of uh, discussion about what Michigan's uh, recourse could be if oh, if the Big Ten did something it didn't agree with. 10.3.3.2.1. Interim action. Prior to receiving approval, the commissioner may impose as interim action any lesser disciplinary action, i.e. any disciplinary action for which prior approval would not be required, which shall be in effect until the JGAC has had the opportunity to review and act upon any proposed major disciplinary actions. So that just means that... <laughs> that just means that Tony Petiti could put in a two-game suspension for someone, multiple someones, whatever, and that while they sort out, is there something bigger coming down the line? So that's that's a possibility as well. 
just to read that last sentence of that first paragraph for you one more time, because this is an important one. Review and action by JGAC shall occur as expeditiously as possible, it's to happen fast, and its decisions shall be final and are not subject to appeal. So that means uh, Michigan has signed a uh, sportsmanship policy, which means they can't appeal the decision. So, you know, I, I was under the impression that they might try and follow, file some sort of legal action. They might still try to file some sort of legal action. That is, you know, sometimes the, the legal terminology is real dense and it's like, well, what does that mean? What, what is, you know, you can, you can do this real Talmudic parsing of like, what does this mean? Like, shall not be appealed, cannot be appealed. Like, that's real straightforward. That is extremely straightforward. You signed a thing that says this is the deal. And so whatever the conference says can't be appealed. Like, that's real, real straightforward. Yeah. Um, real quick before we get into this, the super chat, Joe was saying in the chat that Chris K eats dry fruit, fruit loops for breakfast. Look, let's we can have our fun and stuff, but please don't insult a Michigan man by saying he does not have milk with his breakfast. OK, I, let's not go to these lengths. We're trying to stay friendly in this. We've had to ban a couple of people. We don't want to ban any more people. So please easy up on the milk stuff. Will Zerk says, this just in, Michigan blames OSU for the hiring of OSU spy Connor Sign Whisperer Stallion. I mean, listen, if this is all like a uh, false flag operation, I mean, well done. That is that is like a wheels within wheels, eight dimensional chess kind of thing. I suspect that's not what's going to be the ultimately end up being the explanation here. But, you know, listen, if you... If you play the game that well, that's uh, you know you, you gotta you gotta kind of tip your hat. Have we noticed that there's no longer the the conversation about the crime itself? It's not about the sign stealing. It's not about any of that. It's oh Ryan Day turned them in. Oh Ryan Day's brother turned them in. Oh you guys are soft. I mean there's there's no disputing. The Connor Stallions. There's no disputing. You know, let's let's let me find it here in the, the images, the picture. And let me got to drop the super chat off here really quick. Um, there's no there's there's not a lot of disputing any of these other things. It's all now about trying to go and attack the messenger or whatever. So it's 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 kind of amazing how we have uh, have progressed here at this point, and everybody trying to talk about. The, the the fact that they're not getting a fair shake and nobody talking about the fact that oh gee they've kind of been caught red-handed at this point um the what was the super chat up there um i have to real quick it. it's, in the, it's in the starred comments uh starred. yeah we yeah we read it but yeah just to get back to will zerk super chat well, thank you super chat i do think if this all is proven to be true that ohio state is to blame for all of this it's the the jim harbaugh saying they're going to beat ohio state or die trying like losing to ohio state if, if the cheating started in 2021 i mean the math the timeline all fits so i do think ultimately this is all ohio state's fault it uh you know i, I think it's interesting that the uh beat ohio state or die trying might be might become beat Ohio State and or die trying like it, that that might not be an either or situation uh, depending on how all of this shakes out and again or, let's re let's repeat all of the things that we've said before remains to see what can be proven because Tony Petiti is not going to like just take well this guy on Twitter said like there's actually a you know you have to consider the actual evidence what can be what has been presented to him what has been proven has more than has been presented publicly been presented to him or has less than what has been presented publicly been presented to him both of those are possibilities and what you know of the stuff that you has been sort of rumored but not reported yet what can you prove of that if anything because there's you know there i think everyone has sort of been waiting for another shoe to drop a potentially significant shoe and it hasn't happened yet and does that mean that there is insufficient proof to prove it, or does that mean that it just hasn't been, you know, that it hasn't been brought out yet, but it might get brought out, you know, if Tony Petiti doesn't act on it? We don't know. This is all speculation at this point. 
we have you know a lot of information now about what Tony Petiti can and can't do, how he's making the decision, who makes the decision if it's a more serious punishment, what can Michigan do if there is a significant punishment levied. We have a lot more information about that. We don't have a lot of information about Tony Petiti himself. We know, like as like I said earlier, we know he's a TV guy, so he's you know is he going to risk damaging the Ohio State Michigan broadcast or you know devaluing the Big Ten championship game? Or is he the former MLB executive who helped nuke the Houston Astros for their sign-stealing thing? He is both of those people. You know, th this is the there are two wolves inside of you. And, you know, which, which of those wolves is going to win? There's, there's so many things we don't know that, you know, I, I, I'm sure the comments right now are going by like a, you know, like a speed run. But I'm sure people are, are asking what do we think the punishment's going to be? And I will be the first to raise my hand and say, I don't know. Will there be a punishment? I don't know. It, will it be a serious punishment? I don't know. They could do nothing. They could force Michigan to vacate games or suspend, you know, Jim Harbaugh and the coordinators, or they could ban them from the Big Ten championship game. About the only thing that I could, would be like shocked, shocked if they did, would be like say, okay, you don't get to play any more games this year. Like th that doesn't seem real likely. They're not going to take the Ohio State Michigan game, the Ohio Michigan Penn State game off the calendar. That doesn't that that's not going to happen. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, leeway in terms of the conference rules that we just read, the sportsmanship policy that we just read, in terms of what he can do. There are not really any guardrails there. He could do just about anything he wants to, and because Tony Petiti is new to the job. We don't have this like track record of him that oh man you know you hear about judges being like hanging judges like oh this tough is tough on crime yeah tough on crime like we don't have any context on this because this is a new guy who hasn't had to deal with this. Uh, welcome to the show, kid. Hope you enjoy your uh, hope you enjoy your new office next to the highway in uh, in uh, Rosemont. And, and all the fuck of the show you can eat. I uh, got a <laughs> couple super chats and a comment that's not a super chat that I want to put up after, but Mike Ferguson. Michigan fans eat their cereal with Brondo. Is that like Fago? That's it's, from uh, uh, it's from uh, Idiocracy. Idiocracy. Yeah, it's got why. it's got the new, uh, what the whatever the plants need. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's, it's from Idiocracy. Yes. Uh, Blue Wolverine says allegations only at this point. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've we've sort of addressed that. What what is provable? What is not? I mean, it is. You're getting to the point where there's a little more proof than there was a week ago and there's a lot more proof than there was two weeks ago and it all feels like it's trending a certain way but you know we have been we have on every single show that we've done talked about like you gotta be patient you gotta let stuff play out you don't want to get out ahead of things we're trying to make sure we're doing that here but i mean it feels like the likelihood that like none of this happened and no rules were broken that feels pretty like that likelihood feels pretty low to me right now you can also have a bunch of denials and it, the allegations become proof because of the the overwhelming evidence even if nobody admits to anything and again they don't really have the court of law aspect the the preponderance or the you know it's not a legal thing that they need to come to they just have to come to something that follows their bylaws that they've already set up. So um, wh whatever they feel like doing, they can pretty much do. Mike Schaefer with the great Wonka reference here. You cheated, you lose. Good day, sir. Also, the dead Schembechler's uh, mm -hmm. avatar is tremendous. I know, I know. Mike Schaefer is moving up my hot 11 of, uh, <laughs> of, of Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel posters right there. Super chat, Will Zirk. Tony Petiti is Ryan Day's mm. cousin. That would be big. Now I can't confirm that. Uh, big Tom, Kevin, if you guys can, oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know how I don't you know, know how what? much he's talked about nil, so I'm not sure if that's true or not. I do wonder how how many degrees of separation will it take for somebody to draw a conclusion? It, 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 has Tony Petiti ever been to New Hampshire? I think that's something we need to know. I, I need to see his in New Hampshire, so I'm in on it. We're talking see, about important Kevin. people only. It's not. Oh, okay. Really. I, can can we see Tony Petiti's Google timeline or Apple timeline of his travel or the the push pins and all of the states that he's been to? Because I'm interested. What has happened? Was was he in ever in New Hampshire? Was he in Massachusetts when Ryan Day was at Boston College? Was he in the San Francisco area when 
Ryan Day was with the 49ers. Was he near Philadelphia or New Jersey when Ryan Day was with the Philadelphia Eagles? Has he been in Ohio at any point since 2017? Because if he has, you don't even have to be related. At that point, uh, something there is hinky. The TV did go to Harvard Law. That's in Massachusetts. That is. Which is New Hampshire adjacent. And you don't go there just to go there. You go there for a reason, and that reason is to build a conspiracy that will eventually take down the University of Michigan football program. Boy, um, we met, I think we've put it all together. Uh, so Charlie hopefully Day, more, th- <laughs> more, more thumbs up from the Michigan fans. I can feel them coming in already. Uh, Dave K says, UM fan, uh, super fan illegally spies, OSU super fan wears stupid cowboy hat and cape. So <laughs> are we are we mm. asking Tony Petiti to take action on two different matters here? I don't, uh, I mean, the, the, but with, the, the action is not which the is action. Worse. The, well, I, that's a debate. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a judge. I'm not here to, I'm not the lead <laughs> commissioner, Tony. That's not my call to make. What a Sophie's choice that would be. You know what? It's kind of both in half. <laughs> that would be a Solomon's choice, not a Sophie's choice. I know. But, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> Dave K says, you think Day was the loudest voice on the call? Hey, do we want to let's let's read just for people who may be joining us late, just the first couple paragraphs of this Pete Thamel story, just to put some context here to what we're talking about. A vast majority of P- Big Ten coaches expressed their frustrations with the ongoing sign stealing investigation in, at Michigan. In a video call with Commissioner Tony Petiti on Wednesday, sources told ESPN the call, which took 90 minutes, included nearly an hour without Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, who hung up after the regularly scheduled Big Ten business to allow the conference's coaches to speak freely about the NCAA's investigation into Michigan. According to five sources familiar with the call, a chorus of voices encouraged Petiti to take action against Michigan in a call that was described as both intense and emotional. I, I don't... I don't know whose voice is louder. I don't think anybody's voice needs to be loudest because you're just having a conversation. You're not shouting over each other. You're taking time. Um, You're going one at a time and you're giving your thoughts. I don't know that anybody needs to get loud, but what you do is you convey how this, how, how having signals already in hand and knowing what is going to happen impacts your team, what it has cost your program, what it has cost your players, the opportunities that it has cost them, draft positions that it may have cost them, uh, grief that it has cost them from social media, stuff like that. And it's not just the Ohio State side saying things like, or that that would be having those kinds of conversations. So I, it's just conveying that. I think you don't necessarily need to get angry. You just, you're happy that you actually have a commissioner who is listening to you. And that is a change, I think, for Big Ten coaches uh, of late. So you talk to him, you tell him what, what is going, your feelings, your thoughts. And y- yes, yeah, some of it's going to get emotional because I mean, they, these are tense dudes, but uh, you know, would I be shocked if Brian Day was the loudest? No, not at all. Um, although Tom Allen has a very loud speaking voice, <laughs> but he wants you to love each other. So that doesn't sound like the tone of the call overall. PG Fleck was probably clapping a lot or whatever. Um, you know, there Rose was the boat. one one thing that I think there's been a lot of conversation about. Like, this doesn't give you a big advantage. Like, this is this is not a big deal. Here's why coaches are uh, talking about this as a big deal. And you know, this is the Big Ten call. This is also the report in the Athletic on Wednesday. All these days are blending, blending together. The report in the Athletic on Wednesday that they surveyed 50 college football coaches nationally, and I think it was two rated this as a one or a two in terms of severity on a one to five scale. Like virtually everyone said, like, this is at least medium severity. And the vast majority said four or five out of five in terms of severity of the scale. So those are head coach, you know, those are coaches, college football coaches who have some sense of how college football works. I wanted to go back and look at trying to, trying to put just an objective measure on what kind of an advantage this might have provided. And it seemed like the two the two games, based on the scouting that has been come out come out this year in terms of like who Michigan was spending a lot of time looking at, it was mostly the the, the better teams on the schedule. So I, it, I don't think there's been any indication that Michigan like sought out to scout a Bowling Green game because they really weren't that worried about Bowling Green. So I went back to last year's game, last year's games uh, as scouted on MGo Blog, which is a you know probably the biggest Michigan site. They do a segment every after every game, well, most games, 
uh, where they do, it's called Upon Further Review, and they go through and scout play-by-play, and they'll rate players and say, this guy did this well, this guy did this poorly, this, you know, here's why this worked, here's why this didn't. And they have a segment on there at the bottom called RPS, which is Rock, Paper, Scissors. And that's basically, hey, your play call was so good that it blew up the other team's play call, or the other team made a play call that was so good that you had no chance of stopping it. So, you know, on average, you would expect these to be about even. You know, it would come out about even, unless your coaching staff is so much smarter than the other coaching staff, and the other coaching staff is so stupid that, you know, so that's that's sort of the explanation for this over the years. The Penn State game uh, last year, Michigan had 21 plus plays and three minus plays. They were plus 18 in rock, paper, scissors uh, in the 2022 Michigan-Penn State game. This was after Connor Stallions was on the staff, before any of this had come out publicly. So plus 18. You would expect, you know, this is essentially, on average, you would expect to be flipping a coin and having it come out about even, right? So plus 18 is significant. The Ohio State game, they were plus uh, plus 24, minus 12, so they were plus 12. Uh, the notes on that one was property of the Baltimore Ravens NFL Club LLC. Uh, that would be the uh, Michigan defensive coordinator, Jesse Minter, being off the... Uh, you know, Baltimore Ravens tree from John Harbaugh. So Michigan uh, came out a total of plus 30 ahead uh, on Penn State and Ohio State last year, uh, as judged by a Michigan blogger at the time before any of this had come out. So this is as objective a measure as you could possibly, you know, you can't say, oh, you're skewing numbers. Like, these are the numbers from a Michigan guy. You would assume, assume that this would help you more on the defensive side of the ball than the offensive side of the ball, because defense is a little more reactive than offense. Offense, you're going to run what you're going to run. Defense, you're reacting to what the what the offense is doing. So that that is, you know, you would expect that to be the side of the ball. And they did have a pretty significant advantage against both Penn State and Ohio State in those measures last year. Super chat, no, no. Yeah, hey, oh. So say Tony Petiti does nothing, and once the investigation concludes, everything turns out to be true. Would the coaches and ads ever forgive Petiti? No. That's. <laughs> that is interesting because coaches can hold grudges against commissioners, and that goes with uh, any conference that you'll find. But um, I think one thing that Petiti can do is do nothing and let this play out. And then it's like, well, Nancy has handed down their punishment, and we agree with it. And look, yeah, they may have Michigan may have won the Big Ten championship in 2023 and gone to the playoffs, but the NCAA has removed that, so all things are fixed. And you know, now my hands are clean of it, and. Everything is fine, and it, it won't be fine for the opposing coaches. But, um, you know, that's so often coaches, administrators will just r- rightly, wrongly let the process play out. And it's not not wrongly letting the process play out, but they, they will hide behind it. They will wait for it. Like I say wrongly and hiding behind it is when the player is in trouble with the law and the coaches are, are like, we're going to let the process play out, knowing that, They've got a guy that did something wrong, and it's like, yeah, but we've got a big game. So we're just going to let the process play out and then suspend them against Eastern Michigan, something like that. That's that's the p- waiting for the process, that is. like That's the wink and the nod of college sports. This is a little a lot different than that. So the weight, the immensity of the gigantic, enormous cheating scandal going on right now, you can understand taking your time and getting all of the information right, but there's so much information that if you've got a certain amount of information that reaches a point, like if, if you're filling a cup with the allegations and the information, how much of that cup do you need f- to be full before you're like, well, we need to act. The Big Ten needs to act. You don't need the entire cup full. Is it If you've got a 24-ounce cup or a 24-ounce mug, is it 8 ounces or you know, is it 12? Where does that cup need to be for you to be like, geez, this cup is no longer half empty. It's half full. Well, and that that's the great question, because we don't have enough context about Tony Petiti in his current role as the Big Ten commissioner to really be able to judge how he's going to view this. I mean, again, we have the his time at MLB and, and the, the Astro sign stealing investigation, and they came down pretty hard on that. But that was not, you know, that, that was something that came out after the season. So it wasn't that they, um, you know, he didn't vacate a season or anything. Astros still have that, uh, what? MLB commissioner Rob Manfred so eloquently called a hunk of metal. Great job, Rob. You're so good at your job. He'll be gotten. Um, <laughs> Dodger fan Kevin has logged on. Um, it, it's, 
there's there's so much we still don't know because uh, to repeat something we said earlier we don't know exactly what evidence has been presented because not everything that has been a lot of these articles have been you know presented as we were told sources what kind of evidence is there to back all this stuff up you, you get the sense that there it's not nothing like national outlets are not running stories you know coming down against one of the bigger brands in the sport based on nothing there's something there the question is like what is there what what can you prove how you know what how severe are the violations attached to what can be proven what does tony petiti want to do about it he has he has the leeway and the big 10 on the whole has the ability to do something about it but depending on what is presented to them they may or may not decide to do it and we don't have the track record from tony petiti we certainly don't have the track record from JGEC. We don't even know who's on the JGEC committee right now to even be able to say like, oh, well, that guy's a hanging judge. That, you know, this is, it's Ohio State and Penn State and Michigan State and they're on the committee and oh boy, are they going to, like, we have no idea who's on this committee right now. So all of that is is kind of a question. And, you know, all of the timing on all this stuff is like within a reasonable amount of time should, you know, needs, needs to be done expeditiously, so quickly, but not you know, not like, hey, it has to be done within 72 hours or three weeks or six months. It's all just kind of like, well, you know, use your best judgment. So there's just, there's so much on here that we just don't know yet in terms of like, what are you expecting? I don't know. I'm expecting to probably be doing another live show at some point whenever whatever else blows up. What, what about if it's an eye for an eye type of thing? And Ohio State, everybody gets Michigan's calls for the next two years, two plus years. Then, then we'll see if actually having the calls is any kind of advantage. And then everybody would be happy with that. I think at least thirteen of the fourteen Big Ten coaches would be okay with that. And isn't that all you need? Mike Ferguson with the super chat. <laughs> Connor gets the seats behind the pillars in the shoe prior to twenty twenty one. I did see. Um, so somebody put his picture in the seats of 2020 when it was just all cardboard cutouts. Uh, so he was representing in 2020 as well when no fans were allowed in Ohio Stadium or any of the stadiums. So that was great to see. Uh, Rick S. says, again, why illegally steal signs if it offers no advantage? I've yet to see a Michigan fan answer this question. And, you know, you look at the, you know, that thing in the athletic that we just talked about with this survey of the 50 coaches. And you look at the rock, paper, scissors thing I just read you from MGO blog. Like, like this self-evidently is a significant advantage and it's self-evidently a significant advantage because you're doing all this work. You're breaking these rules to get that advantage. If there, if there wasn't an advantage to be gleaned there, then you wouldn't do it. I mean, the, the, the idea that people steal signs during games, like, yeah, there's a reason you steal signs during games. It's because you then can act on those later and that's an advantage. But generally, it takes a while to gain that advantage. So you could, you know, you could fall behind by two touchdowns, three touchdowns by the time you figure out what the other team's signs are, and then it might be too late. So if you have the stuff in advance, then you don't necessarily, you know, you have a much better chance to figure stuff out right off the top of the game and, and not have to, you know, not have to spend the whole first half or whatever decoding things. And just to answer the next reply that I'm sure will be popping up in the comments, it's not that easy to change your signs immediately. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. You have a lot of players. You're spending a lot of practice time to change signs during the week. That's why you can change signs between the end of the regular season, the conference championship games, and the bowl games because you have a whole month. Then you have a lot more time. You're not trying to cram this all into seven days. And TCU did. And how did that game go? I mean, Michigan, Michigan was I – th I think we all expected how Michigan was playing at the end of the – regular season in the Big Ten Championship game, I think we all expected Michigan to just steamroll at TCU because you could tell TCU was a deeply flawed team, and you saw that 10 days later against Georgia, and they didn't. It was like, that's weird. And you go back and listen to shows, and, and we are, like, trying to figure out, like, what the heck is going on? That Why can Michigan beat Ohio State, but then they lose their bowl game every year? He's, what, one in seven in bowl games or something like that? It's like... And it, we were assuming it was, well, teams are adjusting to what Michigan does and you have more time to prep and he doesn't change things as much between the regular season and the bowl games. And now it's like, well, maybe there's a different explanation. Well, and, and you said seven days. You only get so many hours with the team and every, and every minute you are changing your signs is a minute that you're not doing your normal routine. So there is something to be said about that. 
So to the person who said, well, the NC2A said that it's only, you know, a minimal advantage. First of all, how do you quantify minimal? What is your definition of minimal? But the truth of the matter is, is that every minute that you are going into efforts to change your signs is a minute you're not preparing for your next opponent. So minimal to me would mean a lot more than minimal. But, you know, what am, what am, what am I, what, what do I know? I mean, the NC2A and its glacial pace, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure this out by 2027 and we'll uh, give Grand Valley State the death penalty over it because that's generally the way the NC2A works. I did have a Michigan fan just tell me last week that you can. it's easy to change signs. Just send the paperwork. Just send the signs home with the players and they can work on it overnight. And it's like, yeah, you, you're totally correct. I never thought about it like that. You can just take the new signals home, learn them at home before you go to bed, and then maybe get up early and learn them again and just continue to get them into your mind. It's terribly simple. There are so many hours in a day. Connor Stallion. Coming here from Jay for you. Well, that's, that's, let's talk about that with Jay Patel. Bigger question is, does Michigan have laminators on the sideline after they steal the signs? And this is something we talked about a week or so ago once uh, Tom's photos came out and the entire world saw them. Thank you, Tom, for putting those on the Internet for everybody to see. But that was my question. So if this if this isn't um, if this is in game sign stealing, which, as Michigan fans tell us, is legal, we know. How does that get there? How does this image, the the, the signals, how do how do they, they get the diagram there? Where did those come from? Um, is there a laminator on the sideline? Is is the information being gotten in the first quarter and then it's being drawn up on the sideline by Connor with the, his his notebook or whatever? And then uh, you get the piece of paper and you take it over to the laminator and then by this maybe by halftime they have this now. That actually isn't true because this was a photo early on in the game, I believe. So maybe in warm-ups, is he getting this? No, because they don't do warm-ups. They don't do signals in warm-ups. So obviously they would have had gotten these earlier in the season at some point on site. And you can't get it all from all 22, and you can't get them all from TV. You can get some what stuff from TV. I 22 angles. I mean, that's what nope, there are only a couple. We were told that by yeah. somebody in one of our chats. Yeah, I want to correct that, that. The all 22 does not mean all 22 angles. There are not 22 angles that they show. The all 22 is all 22 players, and the camera is focused on the field, not on the coaches, not on the sidelines, anything like that. So you can piece this stuff together, but you can't piece it all together. And if you don't have the entire picture, then you don't know for a fact that you've got the right picture. Now what Michigan and Counter Stallions has done is they've gone to the lengths to get the entire picture and present it and prepare their, their team for it and to know this signal means this, and so set the defense for this. It's an incredible advantage, and, yeah, all teams should be changing changing their signals. Um, you, you don't cha- you're not changing everything. You can't change everything every week. You do what you can when you know that somebody has gotten wind of things, but you can only change so much. And when somebody is so familiar with what you do, They'll eventually catch on, can catch on to some changes as well, and they'll know who the live guy is and things like that. So, the fact that you have to put it on it's complete victim blaming in terms terms of this stuff. And I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole, but it's like, well, you shouldn't make it so easy to steal. You shouldn't have left your car unlocked. That's basically what this is. Yeah, and I just want to hit a couple points on the picture from earlier. The, two things. Number one, that was from the first drive of the game because that was a picture of Marvin Harrison making a catch that I think was not ruled a catch on the sidelines, but the first first drive of the game. So that was not something that was like, hey, after halftime they came out and they had this. Number two, we don't know for an absolute fact that those are Ohio State signs or related to Ohio State signs. Mark Giffler from Buckeye Huddle reported he had been told that you know the Ohio State coaches believe them to be their signs that we don't know, you know, that has not been established as an absolute fact, but those, the just kind of two things that are worth sort of mentioning just in terms of like one of them is, uh, you know, if it is Ohio State signs, then boy, it would be real weird to see that on the first drive of the game. Uh, there are people on here um, on the chat always, uh, you know, men- talking about, you know, hey, you could have got, they could have gotten those off of TV. I mean, yeah, they could have, but if you were getting all of this great stuff off of TV and off of all 22, you wouldn't need to go to the games and you'd be able to do that. That would all be legal. If that was all coming legally, 
then sure, but you have what thirty five games and uh, with people where you're sending people and you're you're you have people you know with cameras out and all that kind of stuff. Like if you could get all that stuff off of TV, you wouldn't need to have done the stuff that was illegal. So that sort of seems fairly self evident in terms of what you know how much you can get off TV and if there's an added benefit gained by doing the stuff that was done illegally. D. Thompson says, question, why can't we just go to headsets? I mean, we have already heard that no matter what happens, this will bring change. That should have, uh, This will bring change. It should have been in place already. Agree, disagree. I, I assume we're headed there very soon in the college game. I mean, they make changes every offseason. I would guess that you're going to go to, like, the NFL-style thing because, you know, that was always sort of a cost thing that was, you know, it was like, well, it costs too much money or whatever. It feels like that's... We're probably headed there, and the question is more like when rather than if. Well, I think the the conversation with that one is a lot of coaches, some of the coaches that don't want it, like to, they are science dealers, so this would take away an advantage. So that's why some people are against it. But, yeah, I mean, high schools do it. Um, The NFL obviously does it. There's plenty of money to do it now the bigger conferences may have to throw some funding to the smaller conferences, or if it's just the, the power five they're they are on their own budgetary scale. So I wouldn't be surprised if they'll do it regardless, no matter what the rest of FBS is doing, they'll just go ahead and do it. I would expect that to happen within the next it, year, but it, again, it, 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 the option to do it. And if you don't, if you can't, if you don't want to do it, you don't, then that's on you and, and p- keep putting your little signs out there with Mickey mouse and a transformer and a, cheeseburger and uh, a booger out there or whatever your signs have on there i mean i mean we got to go to the green dot system we 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 have to that's where it has to go well and when you when you have the the helmet signals and the the communication if one is down then then both teams have to be down but if one chooses not to use it then i guess uh you know that's that's on you Who's excited to listen to the Ryan Day radio show in four minutes? We will not be doing it here on this chat, but we probably do need to be wrapping up. Just reminding Tony what time it is here, as that is coming up here in less than four minutes. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump off and check that out. See if there's any new updates on Emeka Abuka, Lathan Ransom, Devin Brown situation, um, all of that good stuff. So definitely, gosh, it's a shame to be leaving at this point. Uh, with so much more to talk about, I know, but a, I have a feeling we'll be doing another one here probably mm-hmm. pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think um, news coming out today too. Stay tuned for conference dates for the Big Ten. That will be mm-hmm. dropping at four p.m. We will certainly have a story over at Buckeye Huddle, and uh, we'll see kind of what go- comes out of that. Yeah, everybody gets to find out when they're going, where they're going, and how they're going to get there by train mostly. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. Tuning in. And lastly, if you want to go ahead and th- hit that thumbs up one more time, we would appreciate it. Uh, if you've not yet subscribed, please do so. Thank you for tuning in. Please find us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Michigan fans, Ohio State fans, everybody's welcome. Georgia fans, Tennessee fans, please no South Carolina fans. Anyway, that will do it for today. I want to thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you guys later.